we're uh, we're excited to to really have an opportunity to do this again with you. We're going to be talking about the the second uh, session of Starting Point. So if you haven't watched that, we'd we'd encourage you to to watch that. Uh, we're going to be addressing some of those questions. I'm I'm Andy, the the preaching minister at Hillsborough Christian Church, and this is Dana. Dana, you want to introduce yourself? Yep, I'm Dana Kennard. I'm the student minister here at Hillsborough Christian Church, seventh through twelfth grade. Um, so, so as we kind of go through, I guess what we're what we're dealing with in this uh, this segment is is coming to terms. And so there there basically is is one term that we want to be on the same page about. And so he kind of goes through, you know, what is what is the difference between a mistake right. and sin? Yeah. Um, and, and and there's you know just just a couple of things I, I just wanted to mention. Um, I I, th- I think we have that understanding that mistake falls short. Right. I mean, if you know, Dan, if I came over to your house and you know I set your car on fire. Yeah. You know, and uh, and and then I you found me roasting your chickens over top of it. Dana Dana mm-hmm. raises chickens and and has eggs, but it, that. That doesn't really seem like a mistake. That's right? not. That's. I wouldn't classify that as a mistake. No. <laughs> right. Right. That would be. <laughs> there is a little more to it than that. That'd be pretty offensive. Yeah. Right. You'd be like, "What in the world?" Like that. You yeah. Because that doesn't just happen. Especially right. the intentional, you know, thing of afterwards of it, his chickens are hard to catch. I've, <laughs> I've had to feed them before. So. So. They love you. Yeah, they love me, and so they <laughs> try to give me exercise. Um, but I think I think it's that thing of like. You know, you can't just say, "Oh, oh, sorry," you know, I I made a mistake. Right. Like, no, that's that's just not sufficient. Yeah, it doesn't cut it. Yeah. So, so how would how would you define the difference between, you know, what's a mistake and something that we would call sin? Right. So, a mistake, like Andy was saying, is is something that you might have done on accident or unknowingly or it, you goofed up and it was like oh man that, that was my mistake that's my bad you know oh let me let me correct that how andy puts that um, whereas sin sin is more intentional you knew better you knew you were doing something wrong and like you know we talk about how sin the the term is you miss the mark set by God's standard, and it's something that you fall short of when, when compared to God's standard. So it's, it's something intentional. It's something um, morally wrong. It's, it's something deeper than just a mistake. Okay. So in, in one of those things, you could even say uh, you could be sinning by violating your conscience. You, you, right. just, you, know, something's, you know something's wrong. Um, you know, so I think I think that's that's part of it. So we're gonna we're gonna answer actually one of the questions is uh, something that was submitted for for last week. We just didn't get it in time for the video, and so I just I, I'll go ahead and describe it. Um, essentially, it's saying uh, Andy Stanley made a statement um, in the uh, in the last video when he entered college. He learned that the Bible, while inspiring, is not necessarily factual. That the stories were not all true. And so the, the question is, are there stories in Scripture that we would say are not necessarily true? Like, what was he referring to? And, and one of the things I would say is, Andy wasn't saying that that's accurate. He was saying that that's some people's experience. When they go to college, they're, they're told, well, the Bible's not necessarily true. Um, and actually, Andy, when he first went to, to college, he wasn't in Bible college at first. He was at a university. Right. And so... So we need to we need to understand that a lot of people kind of go through that they they are uh, approached with things saying oh well yeah maybe the the Bible might give you good advice but it's not necessarily true right okay um, and, and so I, I just would I just would say not just with how Andy was trying to be clear in that first uh, in that first video where he says you know, I believe that the Bible is the Word of God, the inspired Word of God, and I've always believed that from Genesis to Maps. To maps. You know, yeah. and and so I, I just would tell you, what he's trying to make abundantly clear is you don't have to believe that the Bible is the inspired Word of God at your starting point. He wants you to ask that question: Who, who is, is Jesus? Yeah, yeah. And and so I, I think just that, just making sure that's clear. Um, the material that we're going through, they 
essentially what they're saying is we want you to eventually wrestle with those things of what do I understand about Genesis or what, what do I understand about, you know, the rest of, of Scripture. But the very first thing, the most important thing is to, to understand who Jesus is. And, and then I would just add to that. And, and then also understand eventually what he's done for you. Right. So Absolutely. First one says, a, a comment for this session uh, we as humans tend to water down many things that shine an unfavorable light on us personally. For example, uh, a lie might be turned into a white lie. I did it to protect you. Uh, or mistake versus sin. So my question is this then. Is pride at the root of all our attempts to soften what we do that is wrong to make it appear more favorable? And, and I would say that's a, that's a good question. Um, Forgivable. Oh, what I say? More favorable. Okay, more forgivable. Um, and so, so part of part of what we I think we have to wrestle with, and that is what's our what's our motivation? Certainly, in trying to make ourselves look better by softening, mm-hmm. that probably has to do with with pride. With pride. Um, but but just a little bit ago, I I, I just was looking up First uh, John two sixteen, and and some categories of sin. Uh, are described there, uh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. I, I think certainly, you know, when we try to deflect, it is a thing that we're protecting ourselves. But I don't think pride as a category is the only, is the only sin. Right. I think, I think we've got some other things going on there. Yeah, because I, th- I think selfishness plays a lot with like an over, if you wanted to overarch a category in sin, I think selfishness would be more umbrella-like than yeah. the pride itself. Yeah, and and I think I think when uh, you know the first time I really remember uh, taking something, uh, I was in a service merchandise, which are long gone now. <laughs> but I was in a service merchandise, and they had these little tiny gold locks on the luggage. And oh, yeah. the keys were such that if you couldn't unlock them on the one, but you could take one of the other sets of luggage and use the key on that to unlock it. And so I was flip flopping. Sneaky. And yeah, and I got, got a bunch of one. I got a bunch of little uh, locks, and I was hiding them in my hands. And I knew it was wrong. Yeah. Because I was hiding. Yeah. I was hiding it. Um, I, I think that's one of those things that that wasn't about pride. That was about you know selfishness. I just wanted it, so right. I took it. And, uh, you know, so, so the, the, the pride of the defending and the lying and the pretending like I didn't have anything in my hands when my parents were asking me, <laughs> that, that could be, yeah, that could be pride. Right. So we can sit in all kinds of ways, but, but yeah, that deflecting or saying, oh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a lie, it was a white lie, that, that might fall into pride. Yeah. All right. It says, my question, and I might be getting ahead of the series, is would you agree that taking up my cross is the daily practice of asking God through Jesus Christ to help me fight through the temptations I'm facing, since my attempt to do so on my own would be a denial of God's control of my life. Okay. So yes or no? <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so, so where do you go with that? Like, like how, would you, how would you describe you know, what it is to take up your cross? So, yeah, Jesus tells us to take up our cross daily, and and so when you look at that, it's it's reminding myself when I get up in the morning, who whose footsteps am I following in? Right? Am I following my own, or am I taking up my cross, and am I following Christ uh, down that long dusty road, um, and and doing His will for my life and not my own. Yeah. Not following my own path and doing whatever I want to do because that's what I want to do. It's taking up my cross and following him through everything. Yeah, and, and I think I think kind of alongside that, it's like not whose footsteps am I following alone, but but even whose am I? Because I've right. been, I've been bought at it. I've been bought at a price. Right. Absolutely. And and I think one of those things too, which Dana and I were were talking about this a little bit earlier in in, in Philippians two. I think it's around verse twelve. Um, it said, this is, this is Paul talking to the church in Philippi and he says, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling for it is God who works in you 
to will and to act according to his good purpose. And so there's this, there's this recognition on our part that says, yes, do I have a part in that? Yes. Do I need to take up my cross daily? Yes. You, you know, just like Paul says, you know, you need to continue to work out your salvation. There's going to be some work on our part. Right. But, but that doesn't in any way deny that it's the Spirit's work in our life. It is God who works in us to will. He, he'll change our will, and He'll give us the ability to follow through on what it is that He's called us to do. Absolutely. So. And I've got um, Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6 says this, Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so it is that, that continually offering our, our lives and ourselves to, to God that, that will really make a difference. But, but just the clarity of saying we're not in this alone. This right. isn't just try harder, like think better. Right. You know, what's wrong with you? you yeah. Um, I always think saying, of, go ahead. No, yeah, you're fine. Go ahead. I always think of um, sin as, as a pit of mud. You know, like you, you're falling in a pit. And, and it's full of mud, and you can't climb out of a pit of mud on your own. You just you just keep falling back down, right? And yeah. you have to have someone on the top who throws you that rope and helps you get out of that pit. And I think sin is the same way that when we fall into it, we're we're just going to continue to fall uh, when we try and do it on our own. We need that we need that help, and that's where you know Jesus comes in and he saves us and he pulls us out like he did with Peter when he would reach down and pulled him out of the water. I feel sure. like sin is, you know, that's the same way as we need that. We need Jesus to pull us out of the mud. Sure. So, so there's there's two stories that um, that Andy does in this session. One is the the woman caught in, adult, in adultery. Right. Yep. Um, and and this one's not. That's not a parable. This is a, a real event that happens. This is a woman who, it, like the the technical sense is that she's caught in the very act of adultery. There's no right. question. Like like she's red-handed red-handed yeah yeah and so so when we i guess when we look at that you know there is this clear indication that people do sin we blow it big yeah right this isn't it wasn't a mistake and you know so so when we well i guess it's a mistake but it's also a sin <laughs> it's also you a know sin. yeah yeah we should probably probably say that yeah but i think part of what we Part of what we have to be honest about is in our lives, we still can get caught in sin. We can still, you know, struggle with that. But it's interesting. Paul says, you know, shall we go on sinning that grace may increase? He says, by no means. How, you know, we've died to sin. How can you live in it any longer? And and like your your example of like a mud pit... It's not that we won't get mud on us, right? But don't dwell there. One of Dana's favorite words is abide, right? Right. Don't just right. don't just go camp, yeah, in the mud, in the mud. pit right. and stay there. Like, you know, that's that's the point. Like, we shouldn't just live there and say, oh, but I love the mud, yeah. Right. I mean, because if we're honest, it, can sin be fun? Yeah. 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 Can it tear apart your life and destroy you? Absolutely, in a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and sometimes it's gradual, but sometimes it's instant. Yeah. So, so I think just being being real with that. Yeah, and I love how Andy brings up the fact that like uh, Jesus is is waiting for you to acknowledge that you are not just a mistaker, that you are a sinner, and yeah. then that's when you know that forgiveness is offered and available. Well, and and I think there's this I think there's this anxiousness for us to admit not just that we're a sinner, but that we've sinned. Right. You know, I, I think. I think there's this tension that's built up, and I, th- I think, I think part of that is the, I'll say the devil's design, mm-hmm, for sure. Is that we'd be too ashamed or too, too scared to admit that that we're a sinner, right? Um, because that's that's kind of that story, that second story, which is a parable, but Jesus is telling it of a lost son who, who goes away uh, and and is extravagantly wasteful with his father's inheritance that he gives him even before he passes away and and so then he comes back and it is that you know him saying you know forgive me for i have sinned against god i've sinned against heaven and against you you know it's that it's that you know just that pouring out of admission like right i 
have blown it. This yeah. isn't anyone else's fault. This is this is my fault. Yep. Exactly. And and the he doesn't even get to I guess do his little rehearsed speech. Right. You know, of I, I take me back as one of your servants because yeah. the father already commands the servants to go. Yeah. Cuts him off. Um the thing I want people to be aware of is that it's not it's not about saying the magic words. It's not right. You know, not just that I say, you know, because he goes on about, oh, sorry. Yeah. You know, or I'm um, sorry. It, it's not just if I add that phrase in, I'm sorry because I sinned. Right. You know, so now you have to forgive yeah. me. <laughs> right. And now I get to go and everything has to be right. Yep. Um, it, it's something that affects our heart. It, it, it then, as we understand who Jesus is and what he's done, it affects our behavior too. Absolutely. So. Yeah. So he tells the he tells the the woman caught in the act of adultery, you know what? What's he tell her? He says, "Go and sin no more, and I, I do not condemn you." Yeah, yeah. Because that question is, where are your condemners? Right. Where where, where they go? They? They, they all right. left. They all left. They all dropped their stones and yeah. they left. And and Jesus, the only one who would have the right to condemn, says, "Neither do I." But but go and sin no more. Like don't yeah. don't stay in this. This is bad for you. This is this right. is going to tear you apart. So, um, why do you think culture is uncomfortable with the word sin? I, I mean, one of the things, he, and, and I would say he kind of jokingly does it, but he, he goes, you know, you don't come in the office and say, hey, you need to come to my office. We need to talk about your sin. <laughs> yeah. You know. Oh. And so, so it is, it is in that sense um, something that's, I, I, don't, I don't know, I guess the jargon of religion, maybe. Right. Yep. Um, we, we understand that it, that it's serious. It's something that affects, uh, I'll say, our relationship with God. It's kind of in that in that realm. Mm -hmm. But but I think it's it's something that we understand. You know, when it comes to marriage relationships or things like that, if if those are if those are violated, mistake just doesn't seem accurate. You know, he's, right. he was saying like when it comes to uh, you know politicians and some of the I think he said like a four year mistake. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like that's not, you know, or some of you have planned your next mistake. Right. You know, he says premeditated that, mistaker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or, or I would say a serial mistaker. If you just right. you keep on doing the same thing, you can't can't call it a mistake. Hi, my name is Dana, and I'm a habitual mistaker. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so why is it that we kind of get edgy when when we go with the word sin? Yeah. What do, what do you think is behind that? I think. When you talked about it being a very religious term, like I was thinking, I don't think I've ever heard the word sin outside of the church except for in a video game. Okay. <laughs> it was talking about a monster. It was called sin. So I think um, when you're when you're in the, the church realm, the word sin has, has had that taboo, or not necessarily taboo, but it has that, that connotation of it's, it's deep, it's dark, it's, it's messy. Mm -hmm. Right. And, but as far as like culture, as far as like outside of the church, I think they don't really know exactly what it means. And it's, right. it's uncomfortable. It's not something that's common language. Nobody really uses the word sin anymore. So I think, I think also if it's like, if, if you use the word sin, it's like, you're judging me. Right, right, right. You know, like, like it's judgy. Cause I don't know that, that sin is kind of like the, the gateway to forgiveness and restoration and reconciliation. Right. I, I think, I think it's like that fear of you know sin is not only is sin bad, but you, you know but but sin is kind of like that thing of now you have put me in a category. Right. And we don't we don't realize like we're all in that category. Absolutely. Like like we're all there. So, um, I, I also just kind of jotted down. You know, if there's sin, then there's a standard, mm -hmm. and and if there's a standard, then there's someone to be held accountable to. And so I think I think sometimes we would reject the word sin or the notion of sin because we don't want to be held accountable. Right. Like there there are times where people say, "Well, I just want to be able to do what I want to do." Yeah. So if I don't believe in sin, if I don't believe in God, then He can't judge me. Absolutely. Yeah. And and that's like you know, it'd be like if Dana thought that there wasn't gravity, you know, and he wanted to jump out a third story window. Like not believing in it doesn't mean it's not going to affect you. It's well, gonna be it's been nice knowing you. It's gonna be pretty devastating. You it's know, gonna hurt. And so, and so, we want to be clear that just because I do or don't believe in something doesn't mean it won't right. affect me or impact me. So, so we do want to address, you know, kind of those 
those serious things that but but I think culturally we recognize that there are some things that just aren't aptly labeled mistake we would say yes that falls into the category of sin right and and so I, th- I think those are those are some of the things that God has knit into us as a people that even as some things are edged out in our culture, culture. Yeah. Um, it, those, some of those things still remain yeah and I think too um, that like what you were saying when you think of the when culture thinks of the word sin it's it's very fringe it's uh, it's very on the outs it's because uh, like when you were talking about the other day about how when someone realized you were a minister they started acting differently I think that kind of falls into the same area uh, when someone who is not associated with uh, believers of the church uh, when they find out someone is a minister or something they they treat them differently I think sin kind of falls into yeah. that same word realm is like when they they hear that word that they begin to act or treat treat differently yeah I, I think also in it's you know people could have been experiencing a poor reflection of the church you know mm-hmm. not not yeah, not every gathering of people who are in a building called a church are necessarily you know yeah. reflecting that clearly right and so it's it's sad unfortunately yeah um so the so the last question is this what is a what is the time you have felt judged because of your faith or, or like you were being punished for doing the right thing it, you know have you have you experienced that you know i'm sure i have i can't think of an exact example right now okay. <laughs> but well i, I you know, I, I never can think of a story, so I'll just go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> Your pants uh, are on fire, my friend. My pants are on fire. So so even even for me early on, um, w- when I first started really saying, okay, if, if Jesus is really the Son of God, if he really died on a cross for me, uh, I started asking those questions of what do I need to be doing and what do I need to not be doing? Because I didn't know. Mm. Like, I just, I really had never thought about that. I, I was pretty much doing what I wasn't too scared to get caught doing. And so, so when it came to, to homework, I felt like God was saying, Andy, you got to quit cheating on your homework. Yeah. And that would be accurate. Yeah. And so I, I got to that point where I was like, okay, so I had to tell my friends they can't have my math. Mm. Like they can't, they can't copy it. And doing the right thing was difficult. Sure. And... I'll say eventually they respected it, but man, at first, at first they were like, why are you being a jerk? Like, just give us your math. Right. You don't have to copy our stuff if you don't want to. And so, so doing the right thing, committing to do the right thing, it isn't always easy and, and people don't always receive it well. Yeah. Sometimes if, sometimes if somebody's making fun of somebody else and you say, man, that's just not funny. Like they may respect that, but a lot of times their first response or interaction is, it's not always positive. It's like, who do you think you are? Right. Like, you think right. you're perfect? You better than me? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so so that's, you know, that's kind of been, you know, part of my thing or, or being judged because of my faith. I, I do feel like, um, you know, I've had conversations where people find out that I'm a minister and they're like, oh, so you're pretty judgmental then, right? <laughs> I'm thinking. Wait a minute. What did you just do? You just judged me. <laughs> Absolutely. Like that's not even that's not even right. Like you just offended me. Right. You know? um, yeah. So I think I think it is. It's difficult to, you know, because culturally there's not there's not necessarily good pushback because people. I'll, I'll just say people have been burned by a lot of a lot of Christians yeah. and a lot of churches. So. Yeah. Unfortunately, I just recall the time that I did because um, I'm from Arizona when I come to when I came to Missouri to go to Bible college and I went back home for a summer I remember meeting up with some friends who weren't associated with with the church or I went in this I don't know you know I don't know if they're called if they're be Christians and I I would I'm not gonna say that or not but um, I can remember them sort of treating me differently because oh you're at Bible college now so now you're more holy than everybody else right? right and I was like no that's not what that means it just means I'm going that direction with my life, I'm wanting to, you know, I desire to reach the lost for Jesus. And 
that's what that means. It doesn't mean that I'm any better than you. Yeah. It just means that's what I want to do with my life. I'm following the calling that God has put on my life. Yeah. So. Well, I, I, I totally think that, you know, as we continue to go through this, uh, it's, I've, I've gone through this a couple of times and honestly, every time I go through it, I enjoy it. Mm. Um, you know, it's good stuff. Just continuing to, to think through, um, just some of those, those starting points, those foundational elements of what are the things that I need to, to think through and deal with. And, and really it's been good for me to, to think through, um, you know, we need to come clean with sin. Mm -hmm. We we need to, to be honest about what that is and quit dismissing the things that we do as it's a mistake or, or everybody sins or no, nobody's perfect, you know, but, but I think that that dual phrase that happens at the same time that sin is serious but grace is amazing. Absolutely. And I and I hope that that's something that uh, that you guys as um, I don't know as as participants in this are, are discovering. If you haven't discovered that, I just I just would encourage them to to keep pressing in, to keep asking that question: Who is Jesus? For sure. So, anything? Yes. Any last comments you want to share? Or? Yeah. Don't be a serial mistaker. Admit that you're a sinner. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and let Jesus. You know, work in your life. Yeah, it's that it's that weird thing. It's like we don't want to necessarily proudly say we're sinners, but we we do we do want to be a part of that tribe that says, yeah, we're we're broken. Right. Yeah, we do need a savior, and uh, and we're at that place where uh, we we can not only find forgiveness, but but if you are connected to the church for any time, that that you are one who shows grace and mercy to others. Yeah, that you are one who is is striving to forgive as the Lord forgave you. And so, uh, again, we hope you own your sin. We hope that you forgive those who sin against you and that you find joy and peace in, in a Savior. Uh, that, that's amazing. So if this is your starting point, if this is something you're just going through, we, we want you to keep asking questions, stick to it. Um, but, but other than that, we, we hope that uh, you go through the stuff and that you join us next week. Yep, absolutely. All right, sounds good. Have a great week.